Behold, the, <laughs> the age of AI-generated Linux distributions has begun. It has taken its first baby steps towards that inevitable and horrific end goal of ridiculous, ridiculous AI-generated content for your desktops, like software, pictures, all of it, themes. It is moving in that direction. So many of us thought this was coming. Other people were like, well, this will never happen. It's happening and it's disgusting and it's stupid. Uh, these first steps though, are little baby steps. The, what we're about to talk about are minor little baby steps, but you can see the end game coming. So what has happened? What has happened? And a lot of you are gonna be like, seriously, this is what you're talking about, Lundu? And it, yes. Yes, I am, and you're gonna just, just come along for the ride. Ubuntu Mate, <laughs> Ubuntu Mate, which is, uh, in my opinion, the best Ubuntu variant of all the different respins of Ubuntu. The Ubuntu Mate is my favorite, and part of that is just because Mate is just such a quality desktop environment because it's just gnome 2 and it's just been continued and slowly fixed and slowly refined for so long that it's just a good system it's what ubuntu used to be more or less so ubuntu mate had a new release 23.10 based on the latest and greatest ubuntu now there's some problems in my opinion with the latest and greatest ubuntu dealing with the packaging and everything else but the Ubuntu Mate specific changes are almost non-existent. It, here, here, here it is on the screen. These are just minor, very minor, like dot .1, .0, .26, .30, .2 to update it to dot .3 kind of updates. There's just the kind of updates that you almost don't even mention. You know what I mean? Like most of these are not huge performance improvements. Um, they're not huge security fixes. They're not anything that most people will notice at all. Like they're, they won't even notice they're running a new version. That's how minor this release of Ubuntu Mate is. So what does the Ubuntu Mate team choose to focus on more than anything else? On the whole release page of Ubuntu Mate, what do they focus on with more words and more screen space than any other any other feature? Quote, yet more AI generated wallpaper, end quote. This is not a joke. This is what they have done is they are now creating wallpaper using an AI stable diffusion based system to create specific wallpaper for Ubuntu Mate and include that within the distribution. Now, a lot of people read that and they go, oh, cool. So like a built in wallpaper generator. So it just generates wallpaper on the fly for you. No, someone else typed in, make me a Linux desktop wallpaper and put it out as a JPEG, please. And clicked a button and then said, that looks good and pasted it in and there's the file and it, they shipped that as part of the thing. That's what happened. Quote, my friend Simon Butcher is head of research platforms at Queen Mary University of London, managing the Epocrita HPC cluster service. Once again, Simon has created a stunning AI generated wallpaper for or Ubuntu Mate using bleeding edge diffusion models. The, the <laughs> Here's what Simon had to say about the process of creating this new wallpaper for Mantic Minotaur, which is the code name for, for the, new, uh, the new release. Quote, since minotaurs are imaginary creatures, oh, are they now? Interpretations tend to vary wildly. I wanted to produce an image of a powerful creature in a graphic novel style, although not gruesome like many depictions. The latest open source Stable Diffusion XL base model was trained at a higher resolution, and the difference in quality has been noticeable, particularly at better overall consistency and detail while reducing the anat... Uh, goodness so they <laughs> this is what it came out as that's the minotaur and the minotaur looks cool enough i guess <laughs> they 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 talk about it a bit and while that would be a perfectly fine 
example of how stable diffusion as a piece of AI image generation software is progressing and becoming more and more uh, efficient and be able to do higher resolution images and, and more impressive technologically, it certainly is. No one put a lot of work into this. This isn't, this is just someone sat down at a prompt and said, that looks good and spit it out and included it. This is what is the primary feature of the release. This is the primary feature, right? The number one thing of Ubuntu Mate 23.10 is that picture right there. <laughs> this is where we're going. Now, now, again, I don't expect every release of every Linux distribution, especially ones that have a six-month release cycle, which is nuts. Stop it. Um, I don't expect them to, every version, to, to have crazy, crazy changes. I don't expect that. But if they're not even putting the work into the wallpaper, even the, wall, the wallpaper is AI-generated, I just... I just, I give up. <laughs> we're, we're, now, the question is, does this go farther than this? Is this a one-off thing? Is this just some stupid wallpaper done by one Ubuntu respin? Who cares, right? Except, except the big dogs are moving this way. Canonical, the parent company behind Ubuntu, has been talking increasingly about artificial intelligence. So has Red Hat and hosting AI services on Red Hat. And you're hearing increasingly of with people from Gnome and Fedora and everywhere else talking about how to integrate AI technologies into the Linux desktop. And the Linux Foundation is, is going big time into not just cryptocurrency and green energy and vaccine passports, but also artificial intelligence now. So of all of these different companies, the companies that by and large drive Linux and Linux desktops and Linux servers and everything forward are moving towards AI. And we're starting to see Linux distributions, including AI generated content within the distributions themselves. And we're seeing an increasingly large number of Linux developers utilizing AI services to develop their code. We're seeing that a whole heck of a lot, whether it's from the GitHub Copilot and Visual Studio stuff to other services. Some people are just using ChatGPT, which is insane. They're really going whole hog on this. That means we're gonna not only see increasing amounts of wallpapers and potential art assets generated via artificial intelligence, but code, text, and everything else, which means everything and we've already seen like with the latest release of ubuntu they release it with almost zero testing uh everyone you remember the uh the the big fiasco where ubuntu the latest release 23.10 the main release came out and it had a huge amount of hate speech in it because no one had tested the installer right that means that no one had installed the release candidate for ubuntu in at least one of the languages which means no one's really doing any professional testing of these systems. So we now have AI generated content and no real testing. What could go wrong? So where, where is all of this heading? And let's, let's just be frank about the good and the bad here because there are both good and bad points to this. Well, to start with, we're gonna see more AI integration into major Linux desktop environments. That's both good and bad. I mean, really, this is the same with so major distributions and Linux software will have integrated artificial intelligence. That's both a good and bad thing. You can see um, uh, Office Suites and GIMP and Inkscape and Krita and so many other content creation applications potentially using AI, AI assistance built into GNOME or KDE or, or, or inside of plugins that get used within those desktops, but turned on by default by the Linux distribution creators, as well as many other possible things that I can't even think of, including AI built into the terminal. We're already seeing many terminal applications be released that use chat GPT and like services from the terminal to do um, application finding and translation services and a wide variety of other things many potentially time-saving and interesting features. But that also brings with it 
tighter forced reliance on an active internet connection, which has already been a bit of a problem with Linux distributions where it's almost impossible to use most versions of Linux without an active internet connection, which is a big problem if you're in an offline system, an air-gapped system, or if just the internet goes down or that specific server goes down. Lots of problems there. It also opens you up to two really big problems that I think most Linux users are gonna have a problem with. Number one is subscription services for Linux distributions. These things cannot be free. They cost a tremendous amount of money in hardware, maintenance, software, electricity, bandwidth, all of it to keep them running because we're talking about AI services by and large being run on the server that your Linux distributions are going to be reliant on. Right? So not only might the systems not work properly, your systems, your computer, if you don't have a good internet connection or their server is busy or down or offline or your connection is bad or something, but they need to pay for that somehow. There's two ways to do that, two primary ways. Number one is selling a subscription. Now, I'm not opposed to subscription services. In fact, I think in many ways, subscription services are a preferable way to pay for these sorts of things. But it does mean an increasingly amount, <clears throat> an increasing amount of systems that were once totally free and unencumbered and untied to any service are now really heavily reliant on subscription paid services. That's, that's a big change. That's a lot to swallow because even if that isn't the case, because we're already seeing that with Canonical and Ubuntu, they're moving people toward a paid subscription plan for Ubuntu. That's been a, a given. That's been something that Canonical has kind of wrestled with on how to do that. It's their, for at least a period of time, they're going to be offering their, their Ubuntu subscription plan for free for end users, but not for businesses and, and organizations and the like. But what if they don't want to have a subscription service or they want to still appeal to the people who don't want to pay? Well, that means data collection and advertising. And that means that we're going to see an increase in internet connectivity reliance, subscription service, premium subscription services for your Linux distributions, and data collection and advertising in our operating systems. We're already seeing that sort of thing happening increasingly in systems from Google, Apple, and Microsoft. And now we're going to be seeing that in Linux as well. This isn't like some sort of a conspiracy theory. This is just happening. There's not really a way around this. Uh, these companies they want to be on the AI bandwagon and they're going to be moving in that direction. Now it's all starting with, where's that picture again? I got to bring that picture back up because it's ridiculous. It's all starting realistically with this goofy looking angry minotaur warrior man shipping with Ubuntu Mate. And if you're listening to the podcast version, uh, maybe go check out the video or just, or uh, uh, go to, um, I don't know. Yeah. Go check out the video. <laughs> That's the, best, that's the best place I got the pictures up. Or just go to the Ubuntu Mate blog and they've got, they've got the pictures up there. But it's, it's just a goofy minotaur, right? Not a big problem. It's what it represents. It's what it represents going forward. Now, a lot of you will disagree with me, but I'm going to say let's return to this spot one year from now and let's see what the reliance is on artificial intelligence and how many specific features of all the big Linux distributions are A, generated by artificial intelligence and or B, tied into AI in some way, like reliant on an AI server somewhere. Let's come back and take a look at that because I think we're gonna see it explode over the coming months and towards the end of the year, I think most definitely and by the end of this next year. And I think what we're gonna see is people boycotting these distributions that go in the artificial intelligence direction and move towards the systems that steer clear of it. So we're going to have the Linux world split into two. It's going to be the offline no AI distributions and the all in on AI distributions over here. And I know which way I'm going. <laughs> 
I don't really want an AI assistant or AI generated wallpaper over on uh, over on my Linux desktop. I just don't want it. Um, if you do not, uh, unrelated note. If you do not currently have a Lunduk Journal subscription, you're missing out on, on the new articles that come through. I've got one entitled, Watching Big Open Source Become Big Tech, The Good and Bad of the Rise of Open Source. And uh, that one's uh, for subscribers only over at lunduke.locals.com. If you go to lunduke.com, uh, you can get all the details on, on how to subscribe and, and what all that runs and everything like that. And in fact, if you do it, Right now, as I'm recording this, I have a sale going on <laughs> that, that uh, is kind of a tongue-in-cheek sale. Uh, um, I released a little piece of satire that states, Lunduk launches sale to celebrate 10-day anniversary of last sale ever. <laughs> Over seven days without a Lunduk Journal subscription sale just feels unnatural, stated stated one Lunduk journal subscriber. Um, and so, but if you go over to Lunduke.com, if the sale's still up and running, you can, you can see all the details of it there. Uh, but I, I highly recommend grabbing all of that, uh, because the, all the good stuff for all the tech stuff happens at lunduke.locals.com. It's, it's, it's solid. And that's where you get like the latest article watching big open source become big tech. I got some more big articles coming over the next week or two. Um, some of them are hard hitting investigative journalism. Some of them are, are, oh my gosh, Lunduke has such an extreme hot take sort of things. And a lot of them are just fun history romps through the wild and wonderful and happy world of computing. And, uh, along with some uh, just some some minor tidbits of, of cool things that are happening in the world of alternative operating systems and, and alternative computing in general. So come and join us. It's absolutely fantastic and you like it very much.